Good evening. I'm going to call the September 27th meeting of the Milton School Committee to order. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, so before we move on to approving the agenda, I'd like to welcome our student representatives who were recently elected but aren't here this evening. Uh, <laughs> Hello. So Hello. We'll, we'll have them introduce themselves uh, at the next meeting. But uh, grade 10, Vincent Luong, grade 11, Kyle Loria, and grade 12, Jasper Malcolm. So congratulations to all of you. Uh, so with regards to the agenda, uh, we're going to remove executive session for the evening. Uh, so strike number 15. Oh, yeah, the back page. We, yes, we do. Uh, we are going to remove, out of deference to our guests, item 6C1, or I, ahead of the superintendent's report after citizens speak. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Any other changes? Wonderful. Anyone for citizen speak? No. Excellent. All right, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to invite to the table. Um, well, this is on the finance. Did you want to handle this? No, go ahead. <laughs> so um, please. Oh, well, perhaps our chair would as the representative to the capital committee. Yes. Uh, so, in the interval since the our prior. Um, uh, meeting, we have uh, processed our capital requests, uh, and those have been moved over to the uh, Finance Subcommittee, and we're going to vote on them uh, this evening. Uh, but here this evening to talk about uh, a subset of those, uh, we, have, uh, we have our guests. So I'd like to introduce uh, to the school committee and the viewing public, we have Bob Patterson, who is our technology director, and uh, an equally warm welcome. I, we're going to bring our new administrators to the table. This is A.J. Mellinson uh, on the instructional side of the house. And uh, they have made an unbelievable team. Uh, they moved to every school and they are working really well together and have prepared um, uh, in the context of this capital request Dr. Donahue serves on a townwide committee, and we have all of the departments go forward with a five-year plan. So in your packet, um, you'll see the five-year plan that uh, these professionals have worked with the district on editing, and then we went to finance. Finance asked excellent questions, talked about the priorities. So we have the technology and the facilities uh, requests for next year and a reorganization, reexamination. As as I always say, the 4,000 children and 500 adults, the organization moves forward. So they're going to do the technology, and Bill Ritchie is going to join us later tonight for the facility side of the request. And, and so, um, um, Superintendent Gordon, so just to, for the viewing audience, that that um, Bob is the technology director for the, t the, the, the schools in the town wide, right? No. No. Just no. us. No. Bob Patterson is a Milton Pub works for the Milton Public Schools. Just, just us. Okay. And that was consolidated. Um, he's no. the, well, the hardware, software. Okay. Uh, yeah. for, that's right. <laughs> uh, the infrastructure. Yeah. The infrastructure. And uh, the instructional, working with the teachers and um, all the different platforms, A.J. Mellinson, who okay. I have to just say okay. uh, has gotten off to an unbelievable beginning. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So I'll start off with mm -hmm. item A, which is Chromebook carts for ninth grade. And in our goal of becoming a one-to-one -one school district, we're proposing that next year we order approximately 300 Chromebook and 10 charging and storage carts um, to help lead us towards our goal of becoming a one-to-one -one, uh, school district. And so our thought behind this was that we will start out by rolling this out to the ninth grade team. And next year, these carts will be in the ninth grade rooms. And if there is a room that has a multiple grade levels 
the cart can just be rolled um, to that other level. So they'll be housed in the ninth grade, and if they need to move, they'll be on the rolling carts and can, and can move. Um, this also will take us, we have currently have 541 Chromebook slash Chromebook-esque devices. And if we have the 300 that we're proposing, that'll bring us to 841. And we're a high school that has between 900 and 1,000, so we will actually be close granted they're not all new, um, to having one-to-one -one Chromebook, chromebook S devices. <coughs> uh, for some of the other items, uh, B, we're uh, asking for additional wireless access points in the high-use areas, such as the gyms, the cafeterias, the libraries. Um, since last year's capital budget, we were able to replace the entire wireless infrastructure with new uh, wireless devices that are much faster and hand, um, can support more devices. Uh, just the trends that I've been seeing and the number of users, there are definitely some areas that can benefit from having more devices so that um, the existing access points are not overloaded. Um, the next item is the PCs to keep up with the annual replacement, which that's been on ever since I've been doing these. Uh, it's just the fact that we, we have a 20% annual replacement policy. Uh, a lot of them we're not able to replace in that time span So with the, with the operating budget. So those numbers, they tend to um, accumulate year after year. So uh, we need that extra money to refresh our devices uh, the next one the server replacement it's just ongoing maintenance of some of our servers that um, have been aging and are due to uh, be replaced and finally the projector replacement and the especially the Pierce and high school auditorium they have been installed since the building projects were completed and they are definitely um, wearing thin. Their, the images are dim and somewhat blurry, and the repair cost is, it's, it's more, it, it's close to the cost of a new projector. So that's what we've got for this year. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, and I'll, I'll point out that uh, if you look at the, the, the grid uh, chart that you have, um, these are prioritized, and they're, they're, you went through them in the um, in your order of priority. There, um, I don't know if I, I know you've been to um, you've been to facilities and you've been to finance. I don't know if any of my colleagues have any questions or comments this evening. Um, oh. You go ahead. First. Okay, so I Remember just have Mark? a quick question. When we were at, we discussed this at finance, we had a good discussion about it. So thank you for all your work. I had a question about the one-to-one -one because when we were at finance that evening we talked about we're not knowing if that was the ultimate goal. So has a decision been made since then that that's the ultimate goal? And that's why the original budget called for us to completely have 1,000 new Chromebooks coming in. And when we met, we decided that we're not sure if we're ready yet. Right. Uh, we have a technology task force that we just formed. Right. We're reaching out to other school districts who are one-to-one. -one. Right. And we're asking them questions to find out if it is what we want to do, where we want to go. So this proposal here, rolling them up to the ninth grade level, um, is, is kind of the final point where we need to decide, is this what we need to do before we roll out to the entire Milton High School? Okay. So it has um, been to Ms. Eberhardt's question, AJ, would you share with the school committee and the viewing public uh, your initiation of the digital uh, committee, uh, who the parents who have contacted us who are mm -hmm. experts in the area, um, perhaps a school committee member might like to join your plans for that committee? Sure. So we have a new technology task force committee that's stemming from our strategic planning um, committee where we have um, three parent representative. We have Abe Cardoza, Matt King, um, um, good. myself, Paxia. Bob, Steve, Steve Paxia. Paxia. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then we have representatives at all levels, elementary, middle school, high school. Um, ben Kelly from the high school is on mm -hmm. the committee as well. Um, Janet Sheehan, the assistant superintendent, um, was at our last meeting. We have the two elementary instructional technology specialists that are on the committee. 
Jen Troy, the librarian here at the high school, is on the committee. Um, Deanna McGill, who also, she's a technology teacher at Pierce, and she also has served as a special education department chair. So we tried to tap into all of our areas and cover all of our bases. But if anyone would like to join, um, just so let me know. We'll put and, and that out in the email blast when those meetings are, if any parents <laughs> wanted to join. And um, if any school committee members, so to Ms. Eberhardt's question, um, they're, they're going to examine and make a recommendation. Right, so then, so the, then sort of the rationale that this is a one-on-one, -on -one, the reason that we're doing it is not, we are not at that point. We're not ready yet. Right, so the purchasing of these Chromebooks for the ninth grade is just add a necessity for other, but it's not because we're at that point we've made that decision. Yes, right. yes. it's, it's right. another so step towards this is it. The, it. Ms. Eberhardt's referring to the attachment that um, Bob, we should have had that from Bob and AJ in conjunction. Right, yeah, so I'm I, just looking at the, yeah. the, this, this right. report that we discussed at Top Finance. And right. I, I think it'll also prove a useful testing ground. Right. So now, now you have an entire cohort that's one-to-one, -one, so you, you, as you're saying, you're doing your due diligence, exactly. talking to other districts, and, okay. and seeing if this is, in fact, how we want to spend our money, and then we can, we have our own internal data, as it were. And right. for the past that's few right. years, we've been working on, uh, from the capital budget, we've been working on the other back-end pieces for the infrastructure to mm -hmm. support this. Good. If I might, to Ms. Eberhard yeah. and Finance Subcommittee, after, this isn't the same copy. You edited this. You and Dr. Palachuk. I believe that this yeah. was edited since our Finance Subcommittee. But it but still has the one-to-one one 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 thing. thing. Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, That's fine. Just so that should. No, you're absolutely right. That should be edited. Okay. But it's go, It's left. We're going to leave that up to the digital. Mm -hmm. And to Ms. Eberhard's point about technology last year, they should probably be checking in with us. Member Rell. Okay. So I, I, have two, I have two questions. So, um, so you, so this year, like as a pilot, you want one to one for ninth grade only, and it, and you're going to use that as an assessment on, you know, how that's working. You know, how do you do it? Um, I guess my question is, so they're they're obviously not taking them home. It would be one to one just when they get into the school and work off of them in the classroom. So I guess my question is, um, would it be um, would it be the kind of thing like my son's in ninth grade, like would Miguel Varela have his docking station, gets his Chromebook, takes it all day around with him to all the classes, uses it in that cla those classrooms, and then goes back and docks it before he leaves? Or is it that every class has, every classroom has them, and then you have to go and get the thing and then use it that way? Okay. Yes, that's what we I do know. I do know high schools that, you know, are, as we would say, they're totally green, right? Like every student has to have an e-reader, whether it's a Chromebook or whatever, and that's, they do everything on it, you know, like whatever. So I, I, I but that's usually my thing, maybe more, pri it's not a private, there are some public schools I know mm -hmm. that, I know Needham does that and a couple of other places, but um, so so to what Ms. Eberhardt just said, this this year you would assess like, what are the next steps with that? And in, 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 in comp, um, combining the, the, in, the research and the, feedback and all that that you're getting on this task force as well yes. yeah yes. okay all right that's good to know all right Remember Craig <clears throat> um, so then my question would be since this will be a kind of pilot for us whether or not this is sort of more to my colleagues than to you whether or not we we should be whether we should place this first on the list given that numbers four and two are about the system and the infrastructure with, uh, you said the ongoing maintenance of um, the server that's aging, et cetera. We've had problems with the system being down and so forth. And so you know, just whether that should maybe be one and two rather than hardware for a one-to-one -one pilot. It's just a question. In regards to number four, the server replacement, um, the virtual infrastructure that had the issue two weeks ago. Uh, I also got phase two of that in my last year's request. So that's actually, that entire system is being replicated in another building this year. Okay. 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 So um, to piggyback on Dr. Craighead, so so on number three, which is the PCs, the 20%, like the replacement, that only being number three. So I guess when I, when you were, when I read through this and when you spoke to it, um, 
when it says here that it ha it's such a large percentage of our computers woefully slow and inadequate, many of which can't run most smart board software. So my question is, every, does every classroom have a smart board now in this district, or are there still some that don't have them? Everyone has one now, right? And Pierce and everyone? Pretty much, yes. yes. Okay. So, so my question is, so we finally have them, because I know even years PTOs, we have, we've been scrambled money to get them so that everybody has one, right? Um, so uh, my concern is like, if everyone has one, but then it's going to get outdated and you don't use it, that, that is, I, in my book, that's like not okay. That, that is like primary number one, way more important to echo there than a one-on-one -on -one Chromebook. Because teaching through an electronic smart board now is almost, you know, even we go to open house night, everything is done via that. You know, I mean, it's, um, and we, the district that, well, the buildings were built X amount of years ago, and, and, the, and all the different foundation and PTOs and whatever scrambled all that money so that we have this use of the smart boards. Like, them staying up to date and being able to run the necessary software, software even I know I'm in, an, I'm in educational publishing that, you know, we, we do everything, every piece of curriculum that we create is offered digitally. You know what I mean, as you know. So that people would use that going forward. I mean, I just don't think we cannot go forward and continue to use smart boards in classrooms in this day and age of technology. So to me, that should be number one. But that's just me. But I, I don't know. Um, hmm. That if, if you, if every classroom, whether the teacher is as tech savvy as the next one, but everyone should be able using that all the time. So yeah. I mean, four. No, that's I agree. How I feel. Yeah. So that's three. Okay. So, um, excellent points, I would, yeah. I would say to my colleagues, and uh, I would remind ourselves, or us, that you know, the budget process obviously evolves over a six to eight month period. So um, uh, I, I think our finance subcommittee will, would be happy to take that feedback, mm -hmm. and you know, as, we, as we work through the capital process over the next few months, uh, incorporate okay. that feedback, and I'm sure you know this. This approves the um, the list, but mm -hmm. we can we can always fine tune this as we move forward if we feel like like we need to yeah. play with the margins or play with the order of things. Yeah. Uh, and you know, obviously, uh, we'll rely on the expertise of our our um, systems here. Yes. So, right. Dr. Palachuk. Uh, just one point on the pr previous remark on yeah. the PCs. There is a certain amount of PC replacement in the operating budget. Okay. This is to additional. bring it up right. additional okay. PCs yeah. to bring up more uh, steady replacement because okay. there's only so many we can do no. every okay. year. So obviously idea. there's even within the PC replacement there's a prioritization right. of you know things in labs, things that are running right. PCs that are running smart boards and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a sort of a second set of PCs that beyond what we can uh, okay. deal with in the operating budget. And, and so may I um, also. Dr. Pavlicek just passed me a note that this isn't the edited copy. Okay. So it was edited after finance and uh, by Bob Patterson and Dr. Pavlicek. So I apologize. Tomorrow morning, first thing, we'll email you the edited one. Excellent. Anything else? Thank you both. Well, thank, thank you both for your time. We appreciate it. We know it's after hours. Thank you. Really and, um, it. We'll see you as this evolves throughout the year. All right, Superintendent. Uh, the annual report, uh, the, we submit the annual report to Town Hall. They have a deadline. I want to recognize Maura Downs, who is your school committee uh, secretary, administrative assistant, and our communication person. Margaret uh, Mora takes great ownership in this. I want to thank member Eberhardt for her feedback on it. Uh, it's actually going to drive some agenda items in the next month for school committee. And uh, I want to tell you we keep these. Um, and when people have questions about past years, this is the resource that we go to. So these department heads and principals take this really seriously. They take a tremendous yeah, amount of pride work. in it. Yeah. Uh, they work with uh, Mora, and there are several rounds before it finally goes uh, to school committee for your approval and vote. And then that's submitted in your annual report. That's Wonderful. Sent out to every house in Milton, every home. So I will, um, I'll move to approve the 2016-2017 annual report. Second. It's moved and seconded. 
Any um, any comments? I, I, I would just comment that people should read it. Yes. yes. That yes. Mm -hmm. If you read it, you learn a lot about the school district. And particularly, I love that each, I'm, I'm assuming that the, I know that Maura put it all together, but I'm assuming that each of the sections from the elementary schools came from the principal because you can read and you can sort of feel the individual person in the way that they put it together and the things that they talked about. Yeah. And, um, and I told um, Superintendent Gormley that definitely that she bring a copy or electronically send it to all the members of the MFE because, um, and all the PTOs because it should highlights all the great work that they do mm -hmm. um, and all the grants that they gave and everything. So yeah, it's just a really great report. So thank you, Mara. And principals. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, all in right. favor of accepting the report? Unanimous. Thank you. Um, and just briefly, we have been in the midst of last night Glover's uh, open houses, hugely successful in the Milton Public Schools there. You have no difficulty in having almost 100% attendance at the open houses. Uh, Dr. Eberhardt or Dr. Donahue, mm -hmm. I mean Dr. Craighead, last night's Glover oh, open house, perhaps firsthand. I had, I had to send my representative. I was at home doing child care. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was wonderful. Uh, there were some uh, mild uh, PA glitches, but I heard we got, to, he we got to hear everybody's teacher voice, which was great. Um, it was a wonderful presentation. The classrooms were all set up uh, excellent, and uh, I think it was a great showing for the school. Well, uh, if the parents and the students only knew the teachers and the principals take a lot of pride in those open houses and a lot of preparation. Hugely successful. And the principals the next morning, they're so happy. I would encourage the viewing public to go to the Milton Public School website and check the flyers. We're inundated with flyers. And we used to send them home in the backpacks. And now they're all posted. Um, this morning, I had a very unique opportunity. We belong, and we've given it some press, schools to career. All the school districts that belong to Blue Hills Regional, and there is an individual, Catherine Tuick, and over the years, I would say, actually thousands of our um, high school students have been able to go to events everywhere from uh, the Federal Reserve Building to every hospital in Boston during their four-year high school career and at the middle school uh, to have sessions on different careers. Um, they fund the robotic club at Pierce School. The, we should really, in your packet, keep a ledger of the opportunities that schools to Korea offer Milton Public School students. So this morning, over 200 high school students uh, came to Milton High School. I gave the kickoff. Uh, Dr. Fernan uh, Richard Fernandez, the CEO for BI Milton, BID Milton, and the head of, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name, South Shore, uh, an administrator from South Shore Hospital. Then the students were able to choose one of two of five sessions in our field house. Um, there were doctors, RNs. Um, I met one student who went and I said, What did you choose? She said, I had a hand surgeon. Do you know? Wow. So they're actually specialized in just mm -hmm. your hand. Mm -hmm. And so I said to the students during the kickoff, look behind you and next to you because this morning's going to spark a love or an interest in a career. And I said, I didn't have those opportunities when I was in school. Um, Fernandez from BID Boston remembered his career day, but nobody has opportunities like this. And without school to career, we just wouldn't have um, these options for our students. So it was unbelievable. And Fallon Ambulance, as always, was on site. Um, I want to recognize uh, Gwyneth. Do you want to um, come up here for one minute? <laughs> come on, Gwyneth. Come on. <laughs> so uh, she's going to be so one happy moment. that she decided <laughs> to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So we I'll wait for Gwyneth to come up. Gwyneth. Solder. <laughs> so uh, we, uh, our principal started to talk about what the Milton Public Schools should do, and the height uh, I recognized at the last meeting, your town hall, and uh, the entire town had a drive that uh, went out of Milton High School. So we've had book drives, and we thought about a drive, and uh, immediately Milton High School responded and said, "We'll hold a concert with all proceeds." going to uh, the victims of the hurricanes. And so uh, music, uh, fine arts director, uh, John Sykes went out, and Annabelle Botsford and Gwyneth Sauter 
created this poster. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And so talk yeah. about creating the poster, Gwyneth. Oh, that's really um, cool. Well, Annabelle Botsford is my next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. So on a lovely Thursday night, instead of doing our homework, <laughs> we gathered together and we made this poster. And we kind of just wanted to really make it pop out. And we like drew, or Annabelle drew, some of the um, groups that will be performing. So there's strings performing, there's the jazz band, um, I think the marching band, yeah. Yeah. and then um, some other groups, and then featuring Pauline Wells. Very mm -hmm. nice. She's a big deal. And then, And yeah. the cost, and the location of yes. the date. and of course, the um, when, where. Do you want to tell the viewing public? Yes, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Tuesday, October 17th at 7 p.m at the Milton High Auditorium. Mm -hmm. The tickets are $10. Um, they can be purchased ahead of time at the main office at the high school. Um, the night of, they'll be sold there too. Terrific. And yeah. if anyone can't attend but wants to make a donation, they can send it to? Milton High School, 25 Kyle Road. Yeah, and the memo line reads, Hurricane, Hurricane Relief. Relief. Yes, very yeah. nice. Benefit. Yeah, yeah. Wow. that's so. Uh, you talk about student leadership, yeah. Uh, and students are going to work with Collicott Principal Holly Concannon on the ticket sales. Now, a little secret to the viewing public: secret. Holly thought we were just selling little tickets. She doesn't know that you have the tickets mm -hmm. created, and the elementary and middle school students are going to be involved um, and create a little paw pin um, uh -huh. that at a nominal price of a dollar, uh, they're going to use the kilns and sell them that night. Oh, All proceeds awesome. wow. going uh, to the hurricane relief. So that's when great. we talk Thank about you. social emotional learning and empowering mm -hmm. students, this was, so uh, Gwyneth is here tonight. Um, do you want to share who you're representing other than the poster? <laughs> I'm representing um, Elephant in the Room, the Milton High's newspaper. Which I often put it in the school committee's uh, yellow packet. Yes. And uh, so, you, are you the? What um, position do you? I hold? don't have a position. I'm a photographer. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like to take pictures. Excellent. But um, I was free tonight, so I said I'd cover the school committee meeting. Excellent. Thank, Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Right. Thank you. So that could be better to hearing it from uh, a student. Um, very briefly, um, Sunday afternoon. Uh, I begin at 11 or 12 to celebrate Milton. Mm -hmm. At the PS Middle School, I will promise you that uh, every organization and group in Milton is represented at Celebrate Milton. Mm -hmm. And you remember that people are nominated to um, uh, the position of community builders. Mm -hmm. And so I have a little sneak insight. So um, somebody in the Milton Public Schools, not with us tonight, but that works in the Milton Public Schools will be one of the groups recognized at Sunday's as oh, a Sunday community right. builder. Excellent. Excellent. Somebody who's in a leadership position oh. um, at the PS. But well, we won't yeah. serve. <laughs> we won't serve <laughs> anymore. You'll have to oh, go. Give us initials. Transportation is on later, so I'll let Member Varela take the walk to school. Um, grade five through eight information night, Thursday, October 12th. I would encourage parents and guardians. Um, our concert was already covered. And we had, I don't know if we've met since we've had, um, we did our speaker in the first no, in our parents' forum. Met. No. We haven't met since then? No, not no. since our award, no. Um, did anybody want to share with that? Was anyone there at our parents' forum? Um, well, at the parents' forum, though. beginning of the school year, 250 times. parents yeah. and guardians. Yep. Uh, I have to tell you, we evaluate groups and the diversity of the group and the number of fathers that night, it was on executive functioning. Mm -hmm. uh, parents have told me they took night notes. Yep. They shared the notes with their friends. The presenter didn't let us film, or we would have. Right. I've gotten 20 emails from parents asking me to bring uh, the presenter in for PD for teachers. Yep. We're going to follow up. So we. Uh, I wish I had had, if I forgot, I, I wish I, uh, no, it wasn't with us tonight. But if Noel uh, Vigu was here, he would uh, retell 100 wonderful stories about that night. The next speaker on the 19th of October is our own Maria Trozzi, mm -hmm. uh, Finding Resilience and Resiliency and Developing Resiliency in Your Children. And I've heard Maria Trozzi speak to this 
and uh, it, it, she, I find her life-changing. And so Maria uh, was at Columbine. She travels across the country. Um, her expertise is in helping families and individuals with deaf and dying, but uh, her expertise spreads beyond that, and this presentation that she gives is phenomenal. And then circled always, Sunday, October 29th, uh, the MFE um, wants to dash. Yep. Member Eberhardt, do you want to speak to any? So MFE? you should definitely come. You mm -hmm. should sign up to run or walk and wear a fun costume. Um, and uh, everyone's been hard at work with sponsorship. And um, I don't don't think that registration has started yet. I haven't seen no, anything it, about that. But the art contest will be starting. Um, so if you'd like to enter that to draw a picture that might go on the T-shirt, um, please submit it. I think the uh, information went out. I, I did see an email today about that from the MFE. And I know that this year the funds are also supporting not just elementary science, but middle and high school science as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's, a, that's a new for Monster Dash. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really, really exciting mm -hmm. since it's become such a large community event. Mm -hmm. um, and the Chiquellas are always there and it's just absolutely the best day. It's my favorite uh, MFE event. That's Wildly for sure. successful. It's really wonderful. Can, Can I ask, ask a question on this? Um, Maybe to both um, Superintendent Gronley and Gwyneth. So, will those posters, will sales be only at the high school or will they be at all the elementary Great. offices? All, all the right. offices. So, they're so at all in the, the main offices. offices of all schools. Yeah. And now that you guys have um, created the, the template for the poster, those should go. Those should go in the windows of all the schools, and so we all had that, 25. You know, hype it up. We had right? 25 laminated. Good. So uh, we brainstormed all the hot spots in Milton, yeah. and two went to every school, mm -hmm. and then everyone will get hard copy um, flyers. Mm -hmm. uh, all the students. Okay. But we've put those across town at all of the businesses, and again, empowering students. Uh, Don Sykes left with them and gave them to the students, and they're posting them across right. town. Yeah, Diane is putting them in every classroom. All right, and you and you have a social, and I believe you have a social media page yeah. as well. Yeah, so Diane divided our group into four groups. So half of us um, are doing advertising, so we'll be putting them like local coffee shops and in classrooms. Um, half, uh, fourth of us are doing food and getting food together, and mm -hmm. then um, some of us are doing the ticketing. And you're submitting an article to the Times, maybe? What? You're submitting an article to the Times, to the Milton Times? Sure. Okay. So, on your agenda. in case the viewing public couldn't hear Gwyneth, uh, uh, Tri-M has taken the leadership role, and they divided themselves in fourth, uh, communications, publicity, food, chickening. We are deeply appreciative <laughs> and very, very exciting, and uh, uh, the, all the proceeds will make, uh, make a difference to benefit victims. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, so, okay. under Chair's report, we have the uh, MASC conference that's coming up in the first week of November, November 1st to 4th. I believe three of us that I know of are going um, members, Varela, White, and Rosemary. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. So, one of you will uh, need to be our formal delegate uh, who will have voting power. Um, so, that is a, can I ask a question? Is that no. when you say voting power? That's when we is that when we have like the regional meeting and make votes on that? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, they'll, so they'll have a series of resolutions uh, there, and um, I believe they'll actually have some um, some elections on site. So so you'll be our representative Sorry. voting for that. Okay. Yeah. Do they have the time zones of when that is, of when those particular I, ones are? In a sense, it's on Wednesday. I think it's yes. Wednesday. It's Wednesday. on Wednesday before Wednesday. the rest of the um, conference takes place. So you have to be there early. On Wednesday. On Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. We're okay. not going to be there on Thursday and Friday. We're going Thursday and Friday. Yeah. I'm, I plan on being there on Wednesday, so uh, I guess we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Nice sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. So, so I will um, I'll nominate uh, Sheila Varela okay. as our uh, delegate to the MASC. <laughs> Second. All right. Thank Not you. All in favor? Unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, school committee calendar. So in front of you, you have our revised calendar. Uh, I promised that I would set up a schedule for the subcommittee reports, which I have done. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the, I broke the calendar into quarters, which are shaded dark light, dark light. Mm -hmm. And then there's an alternating uh, list of subcommittee reports with finance, the exception finance uh, reports weekly. So sprinkled in with that in bold are our various, not subcommittees, but uh, boards and other groups to which we belong. And those uh, report, I uh, schedule to report quarterly. Uh, so I'm open to any thoughts or constructive criticism. Um, uh, yes. I just have a quick, quick question. So when, when you say something like MFE, mm -hmm. you just want to, you want to have just an update, or every now and then, do we want someone from the MFE to well, come to Citizen Speak and so share we, like grants with us? We can or? we can certainly do that. My my thought and what I thought your 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 collective suggestion was that we as a group sort of needed a better handle on yep. all the different um, boards and, and groups that we're a part of. So it correct. would be my my thinking was that it would be our delegate to the MFE giving okay. a sort of quarterly update about um, anything that hasn't been covered by the MFE coming in and talking to us. Uh, and it, it may not be necessary. I right. you know, think we, we do, we have a very close relationship with, for example, the MFE. Um, uh, but, you know, some, there's some of the other groups, you know, the Inclusion Task Force, yep. the Town School Consolidation uh -huh. Committee. Um, so. Yep. so that's... Great, thank you. Okay, wonderful. So that brings us to the second point with the uh, with school committee calendar. I've been made aware of uh, two conflicts for our upcoming dates. Okay. So the first is October 18th, and the Milton Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition has a meeting that evening focusing on underage drinking in Milton. Okay. And yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, uh, Lori Stillman, reached out to me and thought that it would be yeah. wonderful if there could be a school committee presence that evening. Yeah. Uh, which would be difficult if we were having a, a meeting at the same time. Uh, not only because of the topic, but also because of some suggestions they may be offering in terms of uh, policies or procedures. Mm -hmm. uh, and asked if we would be kind enough to reschedule our 18th meeting to accommodate them. So I, I, I think that I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, I'm open to suggestions for other, for other dates. But well, we can't do the 17th because that's that. Correct. Yep. So that would mean that Thursday or the following week, right? Yeah. And okay. let's see. Yeah, the, and so the following week, my, my initial thought was the following week is town is fall town meeting week. So uh, we're going to see each other probably Monday and Tuesday. And uh, I thought, why not go for the hat trick and make it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Mm. <laughs> and we schedule the, the 18th to the 25th. Okay. Yeah, I think that's OK. That yeah. sound reasonable? OK. All right, and then the, so our November 1st meeting, which we um, rescheduled because of the MASC conference, uh, see previous discussion, <laughs> for the 8th, yeah, <laughs> for the 8th, and so as it turns out, the 8th is an early release day for uh, parent-teacher conferences at the middle and high school. Oh, yeah. That's so, um, and I think we had scheduled, uh, compounding that, we had scheduled the yeah. Pierce <laughs> and the high school uh, site councils to present oh, that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so um, only we could be in two places at once. Mm -hmm. Now November becomes uh, trickier because obviously the first we we've rescheduled from. We have a meeting the subsequent week on the fifteenth. The following week is Thanksgiving, and then uh, there, there happens to be a fifth Wednesday in the month, the 29th. So we can either we can either think about moving it to the 29th or picking a different day that week, whether it's Monday the sixth. Um, or Thursday the 9th. I personally have a conflict on Tuesday the 7th. I, have I could do the 9th if everyone could do it. I don't know if that the Thursday ninth is better. Yeah, it's fine with me. Yeah. Any, we'll let the silence linger while people check their calendars. You know, who knows what the night's going to look like at this point. It's okay. Um, do we have no school on the 10th? Is it the 10th um, Veterans Day? Just curriculum coordinators. Yeah, I would expect the 10th would be Veterans Day celebrated. Do we have school that day or not? No. No, okay. So Sorry. The night before. No. All right, then, yeah. Is that all right with all of you? Yeah, that's fine. Right. That's so when are we talking about? So if we had right. it on the Thursday, 9th. Thursday, November 9th. 
And the next Tuesday day is no the school. 8th. Thursday the 9th. That's it. I know a lot of, a lot of districts might be there for special with them, so. Okay. Good. So we will re re approve our schedule <laughs> with the. Um, <laughs> so, do we. So, we'll, I'm sorry. So, the yeah, it 15th to is that? Would it, so well, we might have to rethink to topics okay. if people aren't able to rethink. You'll have right. to figure that out. Yeah, okay. we, we, may, we may juggle the agenda okay. items if the high school and middle school aren't, aren't able to put together their, um, their, their site presentations. We may, we may okay. move them up um, or, or back. But yeah. All right, so we're moving November, Wednesday, November the 8th to. 18th. No. Isn't the 18th to no. the 25th? No. It's, uh, so we're moving October 18th, yep. Yeah. Moving October 18th to the 25th. To the 25th, yeah. And we're moving Wednesday, November 8th to Thursday, November 9th. Bingo. Okay. So, so moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Excellent. Okay. Yes, please. Um, I should have put this on the agenda. We have a school committee policy that by the 15th of October, uh, the school committee hears the school system's diversity report. Mm -hmm. But all important in that report is the park and MCAS, park is over, but MCAS data. Mm -hmm. So there was a commitment by the district that they really wanted to wait because you do a comparison and so uh, we wanted to ask under the chairman's report if the school committee would waive that and we'll present, um, we'll present that at the meeting following when the material isn't embargoed anymore. So yep. in October, later in October, um, maybe the 1st of November, we'll do the diversity no, report. Well, then we can right. change it. So it's, it's really a, a school committee policy that by the 15th, and we've held uh, to that, it's your own policy, but again, to not have the data in there will be a lacking part of the um, so presentation. Did from so did you the say, Ms. Eberhardt, what would the date be? So that, so Maybe the sorry, 23rd? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go on. So 25th. from the 4th to the 25th, you mean? Yes, please. So then I don't think we should have site councils and a diversity report. I we agree. did that once and yeah, that was not yeah, a good idea. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's we're going to have to. Time last year, too. Exactly. Yep. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. That might have been an idea. So, then do you want me to off. put the diversity report off because the site councils you wanted to get in because they impact your budget discussions for finance? You found them valuable last year? Whatever your pleasure is. Yeah, I'd have done Sheila, what do you think? I, can I, good, no, I, I would please. recommend. I would. Here's my thing. I, this is my recommendation. If they already know that they're on for that eighth, for the eighth, which would now be the ninth, if that's all doable, I would, I would keep that and I would move the diversity report to the fifteenth or even, just, even December sixth. December, 6th. December yeah. 6th? Yes. I think that's reasonable. I think that's fine. That's fine. It's not like we're going to be able to take it, you know, on November 9th and do anything more than with right. it than we would with December 6th. Yeah. And we're trying to be conscious of the yeah, 15 minutes and not too yeah, many. Yeah, not too much. much. Good. All right. Actually, I had that under uh, next meeting agenda item, so that Thank you. Wonderful. All right. So uh, I think we're on to finance. Thank you. Okay, um, the Finance Committee meet, met um, on the 14th and we looked at the um, capital expense requests from Pop, Bob Pattison, who we just heard from and we discussed, and also from uh, Bill Ritchie for facilities requests. Um, we discussed um, possible priorities, but we waited to vote until the presentations were made and until um, so we had a better sense of some of the things that were behind um, the requests. Um, and so tonight's presentation was um, clarifying, uh, at least to me, um, in some of those um, ways. We also went over the capital request um, priorities. Um, I don't know if I should go into them now. Um, is Bill Ritchie He's coming. He's coming. He's, He's coming later. He's okay. at another meeting. He should be here shortly. Okay. So I'll just wait to I'll wait to deal with that um, until he gets here. 
Um, also, we briefly discussed space needs, which is on my mind uh, constantly. I know it's on Member Varela's mind, uh, and I know it's on all of our minds, um, because we are bursting at the seams. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that sort of figures into, um, I mean, what we're looking at here from technology and facilities are, are five-year um, capital requests. And to me, um, we need to start thinking about space needs within that time frame very much so. So that's something that we discussed um, at facilities. Um, not that we could solve the problem then, but we, we definitely um, discussed, discussed it. We also discussed um, uh, SEL funding and um, the funding of the SEL um, social emotional learning, sorry, facilitator position. Um, and uh, so that was a main uh, point of the meeting as well. Um, also, under my report uh, tonight is the f uh, FY19 budget calendar, which you have uh, in your packet. Um, I'll just say it out loud for the people listening at home. Um, this calendar is you know, sort of the basics. In the week of October 9th, um, the administration will present uh, the FY19 budget to finance. In late October, early November, the Finance Subcommittee will discuss and approve the FY19 budget proposal. Uh, on the 15th, we uh, of the Finance Subcommittee are presenting the fiscal year 19 recommend recommendation to the rest of the school committee. And on December 6th, uh, we as a body, school committee, will vote the FY19 budget recommendation for the warrant committee. And then later in the month of December, um, we will present that budget to the Warrant Committee. It feels like we just did all of yeah, this, but yeah. here we are again. Um, so uh, it says here, vote. I assume we have to vote on this this calendar, this um, process. So I will uh, move to approve the uh, MPS budget calendar for the FY19 budget development. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Um, and then I have budget line items. Mm -hmm. um, Assistant Superintendent Pavlicek, is this the budget budget categories yes. that we're talking about? For this Would you year. like to go over those for us? Uh, just briefly, last spring, of course, the town meeting voted our, our annual budget. Um, and so it's been the policy of the school committee to vote uh, the, the seven major DESE categories for the, the school budget. Um, and of course, between last December when we presented it to the Warren Committee and last spring, uh, there were many modifications of it, so we actually hadn't voted a final budget for this year in terms of how it broke out among the various different departments. So what you have here is I've taken um, our actual staff uh, uh, as of, uh, actually September 12th, and uh, computed what our salaries are and used that as the basis for the salary line items of the various different categories. We've broken them all out by the charge accounts. Some of the charge accounts have changed this year for the um, by DESI, so it makes it a little harder to compare apples to apples. Um, you know, our uh, inclusion specialists are in SPED, but our math specialists technically get uh, coded as professional development because they work with teachers and not students. So some of the reporting categories have changed this year. So there's a little bit of modification that way. But basically this is how this year's current approved budget breaks out into the seven major categories. This is how we will be, we're loading it in the, uh, the town software system and this is how the, annual, the quarterly reports, the first of which you should be getting probably at our next meeting, um, uh, will be referenced from. So I mean the major difference is we've had to, we didn't get the exact amount we were uh, asked for last spring, uh, last fall when we voted it. We got was approved in the override and this is how it plays out for purposes of this year. Right. Does anybody have any questions about this? Nope. Okay. Uh, do we need to have a vote on it? We do. Okay. Um, so I move um, acceptance of the fiscal year budget categories, um, the line items 
as presented in your packet. Second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Unanimous. Thank you. Unanimous. Okay. All right. <coughs> Do you want me to do the vendor warrants now? Uh, sure. We can, or we can defer the capital committee um, until the end, or we can um, approve he's our. Here. He's, here. he's here. Oh, good. Oh, he's oh yes. Great. Wonderful. Uh, so, uh, so I think now we'll take a break. I'll, I'll introduce uh, Bill Ritchie, who is our um, director of consolidated facilities. And as I mentioned earlier, we went through our capital requests in the pa in the interval since the mass the past meeting. And you heard the presentation for the technology piece. This is the um, this is the facilities piece here. So thank you for joining us for your second meeting of the evening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think last night that was my my last official uh, meeting, I believe, as a, on the traffic committee. Like, oh, this maybe makes me the designate. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so in front of you, you have the spreadsheet. It, it's at the five-year plan for our um, our capital facilities capital requests, and uh, you can see the um, the items that we've requested for this year. Uh, so to run through them uh, top to bottom, not necessarily in order of priorities, but the the locker room updates, uh, portion of the Tucker roof uh, rehab refurbishing Tucker gym, the Cunningham uh, painting. Uh, Glover re-retaining wall upgrades and district-wide updates to the windows and pulley systems and district-wide um, paving and uh, concrete surfacing. So I don't know if you want to speak to some of these or all of these. Yeah, well, I can speak to all of these, like, non-wide list that we've been doing mm -hmm. for the last 10 years. And, you know, when uh, we try to pick the, yeah, I try to pick the projects that really need to get done. Uh, the good thing this this year that we're working with DOA to do a much deeper dive for a comprehensive plan uh, once we get all their calculations and I looked at what what they recommended and kind of put some of my things in there but you know eventually that's that's gonna be a huge a huge peach once they have that but I I, I I don't know if you have the sheet in front of you that I I kind of prioritize the numbers yeah, do you have do. that yeah. Yeah. yeah so so I think one of the biggest thing obviously is continuing with the roofing mm -hmm. you know what I mean and and I always like to say uh, publicly that these school buildings, you know, are, are fairly new, but, you know, the glove is 15 years old. The roofing systems I'm recommending are the roofs that weren't done during the construction phase. Right. You know, they were still in, uh, um, still in the warranty at the time, but now they are past warranty. Uh, so that is not the whole new roof. It's like a portion of the section that was not done. So I think it's important to, to kind of stress that because people say, Bill, I thought you said the roof building's brand new. Well, they really not. And there's many roofs that haven't been done, but we this year we uh, plucked away at the uh, Pierce Middle School. So that roof was that was a science wing that was built in 1995. It's still really young to do a roof. Usually you can get 25 to 30 years out of it, but that was the phasing. That's how they got to the new construction. Mm -hmm. So they really beat that roof up a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why we did that roof over. But so I, you know, I said I did say the the Tucker section would be the most important. Mm -hmm. Uh, going down to number two with the is the paving you know we have about five million dollars worth of parking lots that the school system has so uh, and they're all 15 years old now and they're they take a lot of you know wear and tear and plowing and you know the hotter the winter the more you know areas go so I'm trying to put a number every year to, to, to kind of keep sections done so I think that's a really uh, a big priority uh, the number three would be uh, some major painting and some trim around the Collie Car Cunningham. That's one of the few structures left that really has all that ornamental wood. Mm -hmm. And that's not plastic, that's all wood, has to be scraped and painted. We just did the main facade this year, uh, it, going into Cunningham, you know. Uh, one of the issues is that way up top, it has to be done professionally, because there is some lead paint that is in that, in that paint. I mean, it's not toxic or anything, but it just has to be done under better constraints. Uh, but I, and, and it's, you know, and we want to get it before the wood starts running out. Uh, so I think that's a, a, a high priority. Uh, four would be the Tucker, the Tucker gym floor. Uh, these rubber floors, they're fairly good. That one seemed to be uh, not lasting as long as it did. But during the construction project, we have five rubber floors. That was a different spec than the other four. The other four seemed to be holding up. That one, uh, it's just not. I mean, there was some structural issues underneath it. With it. So we have to kind of rip the floor up and patch it, and then pull a whole new floor. 
Uh, and I, that's a pretty good number because I did call three different vendors and they all seem to be between 42,000 to 50,000. So I put a number about 45. And uh, then the fifth one obviously is uh, the Glover retaining wall in the back of Glover. There's a basketball hoop and there's a little walkway and it just, over the years, it's just got, there's a, a lot of erosion damage. It's a hill. The kids play basketball on the hill. The road erodes, the pavement goes. So it's trying to change the design. Um, and then six is a district-wide window upgrade. You mean the spiral balances in the window. The windows are fine, but the balances that hold the windows, right. look at Collicott and Cunningham, they're our, they're our largest windows. Mm -hmm. These balances are just not, not strong enough to hold them. Right. So we want to start looking at that. And then number seven is just like locker room upgrades, you mean, uh, you know, looking at the lockers, the ceilings, and the, the tile. And this is really a partial, this, this is really a partial list. This is, we probably do 15 other projects a year that, that we do, but, you know, I try to, you go to the capital committee, it's only a, a, you know, a certain amount of money. We just try to pick the most important projects. Yeah. And you know, as, you, um, as you mentioned in our facilities meeting, the, the threshold for what qualifies townwide as a capital expense right. has changed in the last year as well. Yeah, so if you yeah that's going to be that. a challenge for the entire town because, you know, uh, the, it used to be $10,000 for a capitalized project. And then the capital committee would de decide, are they going to use one-time money or bond it? I would never want to bond a project for 10000 because you're paying, you're paying right. 50000 by the time you pay it off. Mm -hmm. But now the threshold's gone to 25000 So a lot of the small departments, I'm a, and I'm a relatively small department, I mean, you know, you know, have $800,000 in salaries and $200,000 in material. You know, th that's going to be a challenge, trying to put all these projects together and trying to g get a lot of stuff done. But I did... Being on the CAC committee, I always tell people, you know, if you put it off, it's going to cost you a lot more. So you, we have to find a way of this $10,000 project going to become twenty-five or $24,000 project could become 60000 if it's not taken care of. So that's going to be a challenge going, going forward. So. Uh, Member Craig, um, I just have a question, a clarification about the um, priority number two, the paving, concrete, and curbing. Yep. Um, th none of that could be is is part of the town's responsibility. This is all just the s on school. Yeah. Property. yeah. Okay. And and, and I even, I even kind of clarify even better for you is that so I oversight you know town buildings and school buildings. I went on the town hall this year. I'm doing forty thousand dollars, and then I'm this and that was the project I put together. That that's not D, that's not DPW work. Okay. They could probably do the work, but that's taking away their manpower and deferring all their maintenance. Right. Yeah. I mean, Member Rella. But what about um, all the work that was just done in Cunningham and Collicott, though? That was, wasn't that the town? All the curbs and everything it, in front of that? Yeah, exactly, yeah. That was a special project, yeah. That was that, just a special project. Yeah, though. right. Okay, yeah. but and that came up because I knew that was town funded and not out yeah. of our budget. That, and and that, that, was the, right, yeah. that was the street as well. Where yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the street, yeah. but it does it affect, it's, it affects yeah. the parking at the right. school. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was actually good because they did a lot of sidewalks. Yes. Because eventually that was that was sidewalks on the school property. Yes. So that actually kind of really helped us out a lot. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. it was actually yeah. really good. <laughs> but like if we needed Thank to you. do stuff in the back, like that would come out of our budget. Like yeah, it would, yeah. On the parking lot in the back. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we do that because this year we, it, the, we, I'm doing the back of the Pierce Middle School. Mm -hmm. uh, we're mm -hmm. still waiting for phase two. That's going to be top coated in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. We did the whole auditorium. That's all new concrete. So we passed. So yeah, there's a lot of... Mm -hmm. It's it's an overwhelming amount of work. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sidewalks, a lot of paving. So, and as I, if you look at the paving, and I kind of accelerate it, so every year it gets worse and worse. So I try to bump the number up. Because five years from now, it's going to cost a half a million dollars to do all the. But now they're really going to start failing. Never again. Um, one other point of clarification: you said that the Tucker gym floor has structural issues, and yeah. This uh, $45,000 that you've earmarked for um, the project, that would include fixing those structural issues? Yeah, so uh, I, I'll, I'll clarify a little more. So, so obviously you have a lot of steel girders inside the building, mm -hmm. and there's none of here, but when they poured it, they didn't do a really good job pouring the floor to make it level. So there's some trip hazards where the girder, you know, it's, you know, the, it's poured over the girders. So they they. They're lifting and the and the seams are cracking. Okay. So when they mop the floor, water gets underneath, it lifts the floor. So we're going to try to repour the floor and make it all level. Okay. So there is no trip hazard. You mean? So we have to work around those structural components. Right. Not a structural issue. 
right. Thank All right. You. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yep. Thank you. All right. Um, this is a question probably for Glenn and Bill. Um, in the finance subcommittee meeting last time we met, we mm -hmm. talked about how much five hundred fifty thousand dollar of the, the request for capital improvements represents given the value of the real estate of the six schools. So can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, and that's, and that's a hard number to really look at, but so, so just dealing with my insurance, looking at how we insure our buildings, I would have to say realistically, if we were to do the construction project today, in today's dollars, our buildings would probably cost 350, 350 million. Uh, so this is relatively a real small number. Uh, you know, we did this part, you know, we did, did the schools back in, uh, you know, 13, 14 years ago when we, and they planned it well beyond there, but construction project, it's really gone up. We did a lot of the schools for $200 a square foot. Today, it's anywhere from 350 to $500 a square foot. Wow. So we got enormous bang for the buck. It's just amazing. I mean, and yeah. then the second part of my question mm -hmm. is, um, just blanked, um, how, how does this amount of this request Five hundred fifty thousand dollars compared to what we re what the school department received last year right. versus what they asked for and then what they received last year. Yeah, well, it's really it's it's, it's all competitive and obviously it's it's all kind of prioritized. You know, obviously mm -hmm. you're dealing with the police, you're dealing with the fire, you're dealing with the <coughs> and it's really we're all fending you know for, for money. But uh, you know, I think we have a pretty good balance and we try to give everybody something. Mm -hmm. But you know, you're going to pay for it. You know, if you, you put it off, it's going to cost you more. But obviously, if you have a fire truck that needs to get, it's it's hot. So it's very it's very competitive, you know. Nice. But uh, you know, we we seem to be getting a good amount of you know a, a good portion. We're not getting all of these, but we may get maybe three or four. And that's why I try to when I present to the capital committee, I try to tell them this is priority number one. I need to get this done or priority number two. Okay. Yeah. Just with respect to that. The, um, Capital Committee has a bonding formula to, mm -hmm. to look at what percentage of the town budget is currently uh, associated with debt service. So how much we're able to bond this year will depend on how much of uh, prior bonds have, have fallen off the table, basically, and how much the, um, the, the budget of the town has grown because it's a percentage of the budget. So that's one computation that's made. And the second part is those that are not bonded are, are going to depend on what eventually gets certified as free cash by the town, which uh, hasn't occurred yet. So those are the two factors that are going to feed into this. Some of these will be funded. Last year, I think we had uh, we had a hundred thousand dollars in capital work, right. um, capital technology work, for instance, funded mm -hmm. through free cash for this current fiscal year. I think all of our facilities work in this fiscal year were bonded. Mm -hmm. So it's it's going to uh, it's going to be an interesting mixture of of bonding yeah. versus free cash spending, um, and until those the the bonding number is can be computed now because we know what the bonding schedule is, but the uh, until the free cash number gets certified, we won't know where that piece of it is is floating in, and that's due within the next month and a half or so. Okay. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I will. Um, I don't want to step on your toes, but I'll no. should we move approval of this uh, schedule? Sure. Oh, um, I'd like to move. Well, we need to do the other one too because we sure. didn't do yeah. that. Yeah. All right. We'll do them simultaneously. Um, I'd like to move approval of Schedule H capital request for school facilities five year capital expense request for fiscal year 19, as well as the school technology five year capital expenses summary sheet for fiscal year 19. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. It usually never works when you plant two million at the same night. I hope the traffic commission went went this well. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Oh, so we only have one more thing to do. One thing left for finance, and that is the approval of the vendor. Warrants and I don't have them in front of me. It's on the motion sheet. Okay. Eight minutes. Oh, I have this. 
Sure. Oh, here it is. Yes, I have it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was looking at the bottom of the page. Um, I move to approve vendor yeah. warrant number 11, dated September 14, 2017, in the amount of $212,308.44. Seven. All in favor? Yes. Unanimous. Um, I move to approve vendor warrant number 12, dated September 21st, 2017, in the amount of $477,986.01. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous again. Thank you. All right. Thank you to our finance subcommittee. Policy. Okay. Here we are. Here we go. So we have some second readings this evening and we have some first readings. We're making really good progress going through all of the recommendations from the Massachusetts Association of School Committees <laughs> to review your policy manual. And some of them are turning out to be more interesting than we had anticipated. <laughs> all right, so the last, last time we did look at um, uh, policy BBA, which is the School Committee Powers and Duties. And we had a reading at that meeting. Does anyone have any questions about that reading? We, we essentially adopted, if you recall, the, the section from the MASD about the personnel matters. We, we added that to the policy that we already had existing, so just an addition of some language. Mm -hmm. And all of these will be posted online for anyone at home who would like to review them. So, mm -hmm. so this is our second reading. Any questions about this? All right, so do you want, can I make a motion as we go Please? through them? Is oh, that all right then? Definitely. All right, so I'd like to make a motion to approve the policy BBA, School Committee Powers and Duties. Second. Second. Oh. All right, everyone all in favor? All right, so oh, yes. that's that one. Okay, the next policy with which we are having a second reading is BBB. <clears throat> this one is School Committee Membership Qualifications and Oath of Office. And again, we really just ad adopted some of the language they recommend recommended and moved a few things around. Um, so there's not, there weren't a whole lot of changes to this policy. I, and I think that the policies. Does anyone have any questions about this policy? All right, so then I make a motion to accept the policy BBB or to reapprove this policy BBB, School Committee Membership Qualifications Oath of Office. Second. All right, everyone in favor? Okay, it's Thanks. unanimous. Then I would like to um, skip down to the number letter F here, the first and second reading policy AC non-discrimination at attachment. Uh, this policy um, is one that we needed to do, I don't, for our remind coordinated me again, program <coughs> review. A, co a coordinated program review. And the, what we did to this policy was just as we did last year, added the word homelessness to um, to the clause here, the Milton School Committee's policy of non-discrimination extends to, and it lists a, um, several different categories of um, groups, and homelessness was not in there, and it should have been. We added them last year, so we just added them. We added that word to, the, um, to this, and you can see it here in red on the the old one and the new one. Yeah, old yeah. one and new one. And uh, for procedure's sake, I'll point out that we're using our expedited process. So uh, right. that's with the consent of the policy subcommittee chair, uh, the chair, and the superintendent. So, so we're all in agreement. So given. Right. All right. So I, I move approval of uh, policy AC non discrimination with the addition of the word homelessness. Second. All in favor? Okay. So that's good. All right. And then we had at our policy meeting, we looked at two additional um, policies here. I, I, as I said before, the, I'm sorry, the, the use of letters, combination of letters can be a little bit um, confusing. Sorry. I know I'm getting confusing myself on a daily basis at home. <laughs> so the policy BEDB-E, agenda formats and content. And if you look side by side, this is just a first reading, so we won't be approving anything this evening. If you look side by side at them, the addition to this policy is the section um, in red at the bottom here on your um, copy when it says when a note and this is wording from the MASC when a committee has a policy on agenda format such as the one above a customary order of business or a listing of business to be accomplished at each meeting regardless of order 
is often included in the manual as an informational document. So we just always have that on our agenda. If you look on our agenda on the back page, we always have old business next meeting items and that's what they're referring to I mean mm -hmm. at least that's what we right mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Correct. remember right that's yep. so yep. we already do that but we're adding the language to the policy just to say that to say that we do it good is and that right yeah. okay I um, on a tangentially related topic I'm going to take this opportunity to um, to circle back to some of the, the comments about expediting our, our procedures and processes and right. um, setting the agenda uh, I've discussed with the superintendent about adding a guests of the superintendent subcategory under the superintendent report oh. um, it, because I've noticed that sometimes citizen speak is used f sort of for that purpose and the real the real purpose of citizen speak is this is you know this is an open business meeting this isn't it's not for us to engage with the public it's for the public to watch us mm -hmm. engage amongst ourselves so um, so I, I want to make sure that that we, we sort of use that okay as the appropriate vehicle so going forward in the agenda uh, you'll you'll see that that line of the superintendent report. So that's that's what that is for. Great. Okay. So, All right. so meaning that, that Superintendent Gorman would just call those people to speak right. when and not by right. age. Right. So that, for example, the Pierce players yeah, or, or yeah, whoever yeah. don't, mm -hmm. they're yeah. not under uh, oh, the high school, speaking. the high school PIP and crew that will be here in two weeks. Yes. Yeah. Whoever it is. Yeah. All right. All right. So we'll have a second reading of, do we need to add anything to our, uh, uh, our policy or do you think or no? We're okay. Right? I don't think so. All right. Just so we'll have a second it's reading. Germain. At next meeting I did skip policy BEDA mm -hmm. which was sorry about that which was notification of school committee meetings so um, we had previously removed this policy from our manual in 2013 uh, we weren't quite certain why we had done that so we decided to add it back okay because we think it's important it should be you know should be in the manual so we'll have an approval of that at our next meeting or whenever we're on the agenda again and then the last policy is BEDH public participation at school committee meetings so actually this policy um, is a lengthy a little bit more lengthy mm -hmm. and took a little bit more thought than some of the other ones which are just procedural so the the some some of the changes briefly it used to be called public comments so MSAC recommended we change it to participation because it's more about their participating in the meeting and then you can see um, in the, the copy that has some edits how we changed the meeting and uh, how we changed the policy and basically we just made some changes to tweak um, how we identify citizen speak that there's a citizen speak at the beginning of the meeting mm -hmm. and then an opportunity to speak again at the end of the meeting should something occur during the meeting and you happen to be home watching the meeting and you feel compelled to come and address us so it's at the beginning and at the end it clarifies the length of how long um, we suggest that people speak but that of course can always be amended by the chair of the school committee um, and it does actually address some of the topics that would not be appropriate for citizen speak such as you know speaking directly about some person or any derogatory remarks and that all citizen speak comments are really directed towards the chair of the school committee and that the school committee members do not respond on the moment to the topic but at later meetings we have as we note on our agenda response to citizen speak every 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 time we have an agenda so those were some of the changes that we made and Ada mm -hmm. and Sheila if there's anything else that was that's popping up in your heads about this one yeah okay um, at the beginning you oh, sorry you said that that this one is the one that this is our amendments on it right correct that, yeah okay, it being you had said it was called public um, which one is it the, we, we, we're calling it public comment not public participation because they are allowed to comment but not participate right 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 sorry so, so we yeah, swipped it I said it backwards yeah, I apologize yeah, I yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, see yeah. I'm told you I'm losing my yeah, mind yeah. No, thank know. you With all the BD <laughs> BD H's yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. losing my mind um, and the other thing is that we to note that a copy of this policy will be available at school committee meetings over mm -hmm. there at the table um, in case people want to be reminded of how you comment at a meeting oh that's a good idea yeah it, well it was their suggestion no, right. <laughs> yeah, because I think that Very good. for newer um, as, a, as I've often said when I was not a school committee member I spoke at Citizen Street quite a bit and in the three years that I've been here it's I like to not that I'm saying anything about that but anyway so but but I, because of that I feel that we did speak about that a lot of people might not know what the rules and regulations are of, of, yeah. of uh, public comment so that's why you know if 
you know, something happens that we would have this here and so they would just be aware of the fact that it's not an engagement or participation, it's a comment and what the right. yeah, exactly. rules Thank and regulations you. are. Yeah, yeah. That was important. So you can look this over. Yeah. And then we'll have a second reading and approve it at our whenever policy's on the agenda next, which is at the end of October, I think. Mm -hmm. And I believe that was all of our policies for this evening. Good. Is that right? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dot. And Ada I'll and extend my thanks to the uh, policy subcommittee. Uh, again, you know, it, Yeoman's work gets done in that committee uh, as well as finance, and um, you've been extremely productive it's uh, fun. in We're the past a good few time. weeks. So, uh, thank you. Thanks. All right. So, uh, facility subcommittee report. In the interval since the prior uh, meeting, we've had a facility subcommittee meeting. We discussed the DRA presentation, which is a it's a consulting firm that is. Uh, evaluating our facilities and helping us develop is it, it's a 25 years 20 or 25 20, 20 year uh, master plan for our uh, facilities and planning our capital expenditures which has been uh, very interesting um, so at the at the last meeting we had a few final edits uh, I anticipate that our at our next facility subcommittee meeting we will approve a final version of that and then we'll have DRA in to discuss the report with the whole school committee at some point uh, over the winter. Um, but it was, um, it was an excellent discussion. Uh, we went over the capital requests, which we've uh, worked our way through tonight. And we discussed the uh, charge that the facility subcommittee got from the school committee as a whole uh, with regards to our, our space, our looming space crisis. And, you know, as, as you heard, um, uh, Bill Ritchie talk about the the price per, for square footage we we discussed um, uh, the costs of construction currently uh, some of the uh, construction options some of the non construction options and uh, worked our way through um, through that discussion um, and I'm hopeful that we will have a report for our as we're charged um, uh, Finance subcommittee and the committee as a whole uh, in the upcoming months. So that's that's been moving along. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. Transportation. Okay. So um, so as Superintendent Gormley said, we are gearing up for our big um, kickoff for our um, walk to school, bike to school program, and the kickoff of the national walk slash bike to school day is next Wednesday, the 4th of October. And we are yet, yet again having our good friend Wally the Green Monster from the Red Sox come and meet and greet with kids um, before and after school those days. Uh, he is going to be at the Cunningham, Cunningham and um, Collicott in the morning and then escorted by our Milton police um, over to Glover and meet and greet them when they arrive a little bit later. And then at the end of the day, he will um, meet and greet the Tucker um, walkers and uh, riders of the bus uh, at the end of the day and then go in and spend a little time with the after school program and meet and greet with them. So we're really looking forward to that. It's a really fun um, yearly event to kick off this um, really good, this very important program about Encouraging, as as uh, Noel um, has said, you know, the walking and the exercise, that little bit of biking or walking, what it can do, especially in this good fall weather. Um, we want to thank the PTOs of um, the four elementary schools that are all um, supporting the cost of having Wally come and um, and visit us on those days. Um, we greatly appreciate them um, supporting that uh, this program. We have some new safety patrol and walk to school uh, point people at the elementary schools. We're doing a little bit di different this year. And that um, Ben Jones, who's the gym teacher at the Tucker and the Glover, will be handling those, um, those programs at both the Tucker and the Glover. So um, we're grateful that he's stepping up into that position. And then we're having two teachers, um, Ellen Lohan, Miss Lohan is a fifth grade Collicott, is also gonna handle the safety patrol and walk to school program and uh, Caroline Morton will do it from Cunningham. So, um, you know, they all also work in conjunction too with the, P the PTOs and the principals. It's kind of a, a working unit, but it, it's nice to have point people um, specifically, you know, ensuring that the safety patrol and the walk slash bike to school program 
continues to, to move forward and progress as the year goes along. Um, we also, as I mentioned before, have a new liaison from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, AKA MassDOT. Um, his name is Moss Lynch, and he will be coming to our next meeting uh, at the end of October. And he's also going to roll out um, a new program that they are offering or they're going to speak to for the schools that uh, participate uh, in the Mass Dot Walk slash Bike to School program. So we're interested to see um, the information that he brings to us and what we can possibly do with that. Um, we do need, um, uh, in our regular transportation program, we have, um, we have every school covered except for uh, Glover. I think we have a Cunningham one now, but we just we still need a Glover. So Glover, Glover and Cunningham. If there are any parents that want it, it's just a, um, a monthly meeting. We have the third Monday of every month uh, to be the your representative um, to talk to your principals, um, either the principal Redden or McDavid, to come um, and participate in this program. And Colicott's representative Jane Green um, did speak about um, the new Cunningham and Colicott crosswalk efforts and actually said that as far as she knows it's been positive from the parents um which i was glad to hear that um didn't, wasn't any negative feedback so and if i could interject yeah. i think a lot of that has to do with a lot of the, the publicity that um, members here did and the dpw uh sort of in the ramp up to getting it done I so it's, i hope so yeah so so, so so far so good on that and um that's all we have i'll, I'll report on next month on you know how the kickoff went we'll have photos and share those online and all that and um, also maybe a little update on how the buses are going and um, and what the mass dot had to report back okay wonderful yeah thank you all right um, approval of minutes so we have minutes from June 14 and July 26 so June 14th um, I'll, I'll take them uh, individually this time because I think uh, I'll give people a chance to go through, in particular, yeah. the July meeting to yeah. see if they have any uh, <laughs> additions yeah. or uh, edits yeah. they would like to make. But I'll, I'll move approval of the June 14th minutes as written. Second. Thank you. Any changes or edits? No. All in favor? Unanimous? Excellent. So I'll move approval of the July 26th minutes. Second. Thank you. I'll give people a moment to go over it. changes or edits all right all in favor unanimous good all right uh, old business I don't believe we have any to discuss as of now citizens speak topic response Nothing as of now. Next meeting agenda items. We discussed moving the diversity report. Um, and uh, to circle back to that, um, the superintendent mentioned to me that she she's discussed that with the uh, Citizens for Diverse Milton as well, who's, who's always interested in that report. And they were on board with us moving it. So. OK, great. Um, so the next meeting, you have the Tucker Site Council mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and an AP SAT presentation, both uh, attending to 15 minutes. I'm sorry, what weren't is that? There, a, a, there the Tucker Site, site Council? Council. Yeah. Remembering that you wanted to get your site councils in here involved during your budget. Yep. And a uh, 15 minute AP SAT presentation. But so we also, have, isn't Collicott Site Council also on that night? Um, you know, this is a tight timeline, and when we met with them, they have barely had time to have yeah. their elections and have right. a meeting. Okay. So they weren't ready. Okay. okay. Good. So no one. Keeping to, to what Member Eberhardt said, not more than two 
major right. presentations. They mm -hmm. understand the 15 minutes. You're also going to be asked to vote the, uh, but we, we have to meet a deadline, but we want to do it in finance first. The FY17 end of the year DESE, uh, oh, right. end of the year by, uh, report okay. that Lisa McDonough prepares. So we want to get to finance with that first before we bring it, but those are the two items for your October 4th. Okay. And uh, I'll point out that, so according to the, the schedule, the quarterly report of the MFE rep and our security um, task force representative, we would discuss at that point. Okay. If, if either of you feel as though nothing of significance uh, has transpired, um, we can defer those, but we'll, um, we'll tentatively put you on the agenda. I mean, I think we um, we could always ask. So the the beginning of October will be the gearing up for um, Monster Dash, mm -hmm. and so then our next October meeting now won't be until the 25th, which would only be four days before the actual event. So I could reach out to um, the executive board and see um, if there's anything they specifically wanted to, to share that night. If there's been a contest winner, which I don't think that's pretty soon, so I doubt it. Um, or and maybe there's just and something. obviously they're always welcome yeah. to come if they yeah, want. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, sometimes the they come in costume. Not necessarily for them to right. come at that meeting. It, right. It's okay. for our representatives to talk to us. So don't, sure. they, they don't feel obligated. If you want to move, if you guys want to move um, MFE to maybe the 18th, I can. Not move. having it on the 18th. Oh, that's right. My 25th. 25th. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. okay yeah. There's a lot of notes. Yeah. Never mind. Okay. So that's fine. I can report out before We're in a good place for the 4th. I think so. Good. And can I, can I ask you for And those who, presentations, if I might, are going to go out to you Friday. Who's, um, who's reporting on the AP and SAT? Vivu, Karen Cahill, and James Jett. Huh? Okay, cool. Um, what are we going to do Okay. Do you have a question? Oh, I, I actually do for next things. So um, for that, I know that for the 25th that we've moved from the 18th mm -hmm. to the 25th, um, I would like the um, cast of Pippin to come in and talk about the show because it's the following week and perform. When is this? The 25th. Oh. Under the chair's report, they can do a little something. Um. We'll, we'll take all of this and put a new proposal out to you. And maybe to look not, at. and maybe move the yeah. Cunningham site council, or we just only have one, the lever. Why don't we? Them? Why don't we look at sort of where things will? Mm -hmm. we'll, okay. We'll, we will put down the the new dates yeah. uh, and factor in the high school open house, and we may we'll move the site councils around a little bit. Okay. Um, and, and to member of the Hot's comment, are they all available now with all the changes of dates? Right. right. Mm -hmm. So things may get moved around. Um. I just have a quick question about so when so w after we so let, let's say for for policy and for mm -hmm. and for finance because I write them in it so and so after we approve them um, at the meeting at the subcommittee meeting, then should I think we discussed that we should just email them to the board is that correct and then Charlene will just take a record of them okay so after approval then I'll just email them to everybody okay All right. that sounds good then yeah so then there'll be a couple that I'll email out we have like two or three I'll just email to everybody. And I think I think a rough draft of them or the approved version works nicely as a as a template for your your recap at the beginning right. of your subcommittee right. report. Um, you know, I, I, that was one of the things that I took away from uh, Glenn's presentation this summer was it's helpful to have your thoughts organized. Uh, yep. You know, when you do your subcommittee report, so that you, you, you okay. keep yourself um, on on point. So good. And if I might? Please. Um, with the rearranging of the schedule, I didn't bring the flyer with me, and Dr. Pavlicek is looking it up. The Substance Abuse Coalition on the 18th, mm -hmm. this event that you referred to, is an open forum for the community on teenage underage drink. drinking mm -hmm. at BID Milton. Captain uh, John King. Cap with Police Chief King um, as the speaker, the leader, the facilitator. And um, it's going to be widely publicized. Okay. And uh, if do you know the location? Negaroni Conference Room. Yes. Yeah, so it's at BID Boss yeah. Milton at seven. Yeah. Seven. Seven. Yeah. So we'll put out lots of publicity on that. And I have to tell you, I heard that uh, Chief King and um, Lori Stillman, and the coalition, are very appreciative about the pro the meetings change. They realize what this means. 
All right, uh, citizens speak. Round two. Nobody's. Gwyneth, do you have anything you want to say, kid? <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's go home do homework. <laughs> All right. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All in favor? Yep. Unanimous. Wonderful. We're adjourned. <laughs>